Hi and welcome to the British Trucking Channel. In this video I will take a look at power inverters for trucks and the different types, how they work and what type of power inverter will be best for your truck. Now if you're new to the British Trucking Channel and you like topics about trucking hit that subscribe button and it would be great to have you on board and if you enjoy this British Trucking video hit the like button and feel free to comment in the comments below all about your experiences with truck power inverters. Right, let's get into this power inverters for your truck and how they work. Now when parked up for the night or on a taco break, a truck power inverter can be a great accessory for your truck as a truck driver. A power inverter allows truck drivers to use appliances and devices in their trucks, which can be very practical and can also save the driver money. A power inverter can power a truck kettle, a truck TV, a cooker, a fridge, a PlayStation, even an Xbox or even a microwave oven. Well, the list is endless. Now, when looking for a power inverter for your truck, you need to know some important things to ensure it'll work correctly for the items that you want to power up. Firstly, it's important to know what appliance or appliances you want to power in your truck. Power inverters can differ in many ways, such as input voltage, output voltage, wattage, whether it's a modified sine wave inverter or a pure sine wave inverter, inputs, input sockets and connections. Now, once you've established what appliance you want to use in the truck, it will be important to know the power consumption the item will need and the amps that it'll require to run efficiently. Now, the reason that amps are important is it's necessary to know if you can plug the inverter into the 24 volt power socket built into the truck or if you need to hardwire the inverter directly to the truck's batteries. Now most 24 volt sockets inside your truck will be rated at 10 amps, so it would not be a good idea to plug a power inverter into this port if you're using it to supply, for example, a microwave oven and a TV at the same time. Even if your inverter is rated at 40 amps, the socket you have plugged it into will still only be 10 amps and you would overload the truck's 24 volt socket and blow a fuse or even worse, melt the wiring. Now, if you're using a truck power inverter for just one appliance, such as your truck TV, then the amps would be below 10 amps and you can plug it into the internal 24 volt truck socket on the dashboard with no issues. So with this in mind, always ensure the total amps required doesn't exceed 10 amps at any one time. Otherwise, it'll be necessary to hardwire the power inverter directly to the truck's batteries. Now, most inverters these days have built-in protection and display to show what amps that they're using. Now, this is very useful to help you monitor what power is being drawn when you plug in devices. Many small inverters, for instance, 450 watts, come with a cigarette lighter adapter which you can plug into your vehicle's lighter socket with no problems. Although you will still not be able to draw any more than 150 to 200 watts from the cigarette lighter socket. The small units also come with cables that can be clamped directly to the battery. If you want a power inverter that will plug into your cigarette lighter, you must choose one that is 450 watts or less to get optimum performance. Larger inverters, well, 500 watts and above, should be hardwired directly to your truck battery. The cable size required depends on the distance between the battery and the inverter and should be specified usually in the power inverter's user manual. When connecting the power inverter to your battery, always use an overcurrent protection device, such as a fuse or a circuit breaker, and use the thickest wire available in the shortest length possible. Most power inverters for a truck will be either modified sine wave or pure sine wave. So let's take a look at both options and see the difference between the two. Okay, pure sine wave inverters. 
The name pure sine wave inverter is derived from the waveform of its output. This pushes out the same power or replicates closely your regular home's power socket. Most household electronic devices are designed to be powered by the mains and a pure sine wave inverter will operate all of these devices so long as the wattage is high enough to cope with the load used by the device. Pure sine wave inverters are generally more expensive than modified sine wave inverters as they involve a much more sophisticated technology and circuitry in order to simulate the smooth output of a standard mains power outlet. This type of power inverter is best suited for delicate items that require an uninterrupted power supply such as a laptop, a truck TV or even audio equipment. This type of inverter will obviously be able to power all items in your truck if it is the correct wattage and ampage. If you can afford it, it would be highly recommended to use a pure sine wave inverter for your truck because you are less likely to have any issues. Let's take a look at modified sine wave inverters. The modified sine wave inverter is named after their waveform output. The output of the modified sine wave inverter cycles through positive, ground and negative voltage to give a similar output waveform to the pure sine wave, but it is less pure. Modified sine wave inverters are generally cheaper than pure sine wave inverters as they don't require the complicated technology and circuitry needed to smooth and render the output waveform. The only downside with a modified sine wave inverter is that it introduces harmonic distortion to devices such as TV or audio equipment. Harmonic distortion is caused by the harsh clipping in the on and off phase of the voltage current. Modified sine wave inverters are perfectly suitable for heat elements, devices, uh, such as a truck kettle, heater, electric cooling fan. Also, a modified sine wave inverter can be used with devices that have external or built-in power adapters, which purifies the signal before powering the device. So if your laptop or truck TV has a power adapter instead of a standard mains plug, it'll still work fine because the adapter will purify the waveform for you. Now it's recommended that you purchase a larger power inverter than you think you're going to need. Um, at least 10% to 20% more power than the largest output load of any appliance you want to use at the same time. For example, if you want to power a truck television, a kettle and a light at the same time, with the TV being 300 watts and the kettle being 400 watts plus two 40 watt light bulbs, then the total required would be 780 watts. Now for this example, you would at least need a 780 watt inverter, but it would be a good idea to get a larger one as you may find you need to plug something else in at some time in the future and wish you had purchased a bigger version. Now what is meant by the term continuous 2000 watts and peak surge 4000 watts? Now this is due to some appliances or devices requiring a larger amount of power when you switch them on, um, like maybe a power tool or a fridge or something like that. Now once the appliance is started, the tool or appliance requires less power to continue to operate, which then becomes the continuous load. That all sounds complex, I know, but I hope you picked up on some of the points to remember about truck power inverters. Uh, to clarify, a pure sine wave inverter is a more reliable option to power all trucking items. A modified sine wave power inverter will power most devices, but it's not ideal for items such as a truck TV or audio equipment, unless, of course, that they have a power supply adapter instead of a three-pin mains plug. Now, make sure you get a truck inverter that has a high enough wattage to cope with the demands you're going to put into it. The bigger, the better. Now don't forget to check out the latest truck power inverters on the British Trucking website and I will leave a link in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed this video and gave you an insight into truck power inverters. And uh, if you want to make any comments, please do so in the comments below. 
give the video a big thumbs up and we will see you in the next one. So bye for now.